What is up, Snow Hills kids? I, you guys are doing awesome. Yes, that's right. I'm outside. No, it's not a green screen. See? Yeah, that's right. We're outside in nature. It actually feels wonderful. If you are around Georgia, then you know that it is cold. It is getting colder, and I love it. Even though I'm like, it's cold, it, it's so enjoyable. It's so refreshing, especially after being in Georgia summer. So I hope you guys are enjoying your wonderful fall slash winter weather wherever you're at. And maybe you're in summer or spring because we have different seasons around the world. Anyways, that's my long introduction. I hope you guys are doing awesome is all that I want to say. Now, with that, we are going to jump into today's lesson. That's right. We are still talking about God's promises. Does God keep his promises? And we know he does. Now, I want you to look around your house and find the most valuable thing you can. That's right find the most valuable thing. The most valuable thing on me right now is this right here. If you don't know what this is, this is my wedding ring. I got married in May and this wedding ring, though it isn't extremely valuable monetarily wise, there's much more things that are more valuable than this. This is most valuable to me because it shows that I am married to Meredith and it shows the importance of that marriage. So what does that have to do with today's lesson? We're going to talk about it. So let's watch the Bible story, guys, and then we're going to jump into our lesson today. God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt, and God called Moses to rescue them. Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Israel may not go. So God sent ten plagues to punish the Egyptians. First, God turned the water in the Nile River into blood. But Pharaoh would not let the people go. God sent frogs into Egypt. Pharaoh said, Ask your God to take away the frogs. Then I will let the people go. But when God removed the frogs, Pharaoh refused to let the people go. So God sent gnats that bit the people and animals. Then God sent flies, and he caused all the livestock to die. Still, Pharaoh did not let the people go. God sent boils that covered the people, but Pharaoh's heart was hard. Not even a terrible hailstorm changed Pharaoh's mind. Locusts ate up the plants, and then darkness covered the land for three days, but still, Pharaoh said, no. God told Moses, I will bring one more plague. After that, Pharaoh will let my people go. So Moses warned Pharaoh, every firstborn son in Egypt will die, but the Israelites will be safe. Pharaoh ignored Moses. So God told the Israelite families to kill a lamb and put its blood on the doorposts of their houses. This would be a special mark that God would see and pass over. The Israelites' families would be safe. At midnight, God struck every firstborn in the land of Egypt. There was a great cry because there wasn't a house with someone dead. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. Go, he said. The Israelites were ready. All of them, 600,000 men and their families, left Egypt quickly. They took bread and their animals. The Egyptians gave them gold, silver, and clothing. God led his people out of Egypt. He was preparing a place for them in a land called Canaan. For 430 years, the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt. They were finally free. By his grace, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His death was the ultimate sacrifice, and those who trust in Jesus are under his saving blood and will be passed over in the final judgment. That's so crazy. Last week we talked about Moses being called by God to deliver his people. Well, now we're talking about the actual deliverance. So we hit everything from God's promise to his people, to the plagues, to the Passover. And we get to talk about all of those things. So first of all, we learn that God keeps his promises, right? We saw the end of the story. The people were delivered, which is so, so amazing. 
And and God says that he, uh, in, in chapter 6, verse 2 says, I am Yahweh the Lord. I appeared to Abraham and Isaac and to Jacob, God Almighty, but I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. And I affirmed my covenant with them under its terms. I promise to give you the land of Canaan where you will live as foreigners. So God is opening up by saying, I am God and I am going to get you out of here. Now, then we end up going through all of the plagues. There were so many plagues. There were 12 plagues, guys, and it was intense. No, I'm sorry, 10 plagues. 10 plagues, and it was intense. So, what does that mean? Well, it was God's promise coming true. You see, it talks about Pharaoh hardening his heart, and the reality is, I mean, God didn't harden Pharaoh's heart as much as Pharaoh's heart did not want to give up these people. So God let his desires run, and... Ultimately, the kingdom of Egypt was crushed brutally under all of these plagues because Pharaoh would not listen to God. You see, God displayed amazing power by doing what he did. And yet Pharaoh was so selfish, so greedy that he was willing to let his people suffer for that. And so the plagues came and went and ultimately we have the death of the firstborn. But God spares them. And if you watch the story, you know how. They sacrificed a lamb and put its blood on their door frame, above their door. Wow. That's crazy. That's a sacrifice. That lamb had to die so that God would pass over his people. Now, you may be thinking, that seems unnecessary. Doesn't God know who his people are? Yes, he does. But that was a foretaste and an example of sacrifice, which is why I'm outside. You see, it's fall right now in Georgia, which means these leaves... They're dying. They're going to be gone. But they have to die in order to bring new life. They have to die and fall off and go dormant so that in the spring we get new life. You see, if you see a tree right now besides evergreens like pine trees and they're green, if this tree had green leaves right now, I would be worried because it's not doing what it needs to. It's not sacrificing and shedding its leaves so that it can grow new ones and it's so it can grow through the winter. Well, yeah, that's a sacrifice, and it's a sacrifice that needs to be made. Or think about the valuable thing I got for you earlier. This valuable thing, that's kind of the value of God's sacrifice. He says you need to put something valuable. A lamb, it costs money, and it costs time and effort to prepare it and sacrifice it. It costs all of these things, and ultimately, guys, this lamb points towards Jesus. You see, Jesus is the Lamb of God, and he is the sacrifice. He died and shed his blood on the cross so that we could be free from sin. Just like during the Passover, they were free from losing their firstborn. Because of Jesus, you are free from your sins. How crazy is that? How cool is that? That God loves us enough to sacrifice something immensely valuable so that we can live. So remember that, guys. God keeps his promises. He delivers us through all of these things, and ultimately, he's willing to sacrifice for you and for me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy a change of scenery. With that, I'm going to see you guys next week as we continue to talk about the people of Israel and Moses. I'll see you there.